There's still time to enter the 2015 Wisconsin Governor's Business Plan Contest, and we'll tell you why you might want to do just that this morning on For the Record. Good morning, I'm Neil Heinen. You've got a great idea for a high-tech startup. All you need is some help, advice from folks in the field, from folks who have been there, and maybe some cash. All that and more are available to the winners of the Governor's Business Plan Contest. The contest is an important part of the state's effort to build its high-tech startup entrepreneurial sector, a sector that is growing in size and importance in our state, and a sector where a lot of jobs are being created with the promise of more. Here to talk about this year's contest are Tom Still, president of the Wisconsin Technology Council, which runs the contest, Henry Schwartz, founder and CEO of Mobcraft Beer and a past contest graduate, and my colleague, Madison Magazine editor Brennan Nardi. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, thanks, um, Neil. Thanks, Brennan. Tom, I, I, I want to quickly, um, I kind of set this up as someone who might be interested in the contest, but let's go big picture here. Why would anybody watching this show be interested in, in the governor's business plan contest? Oh, sure. <clears throat> Could be interest, interested, for starters, as a potential entrant. Right. If you've got an idea uh, to get into the contest, it's, it's free to enter. It's only 250 words to start. So uh, you don't have to write War and Peace right out of the box. Um, there are prizes, there are mentors, there are judges who all contribute to providing advice, counsel. It's, it's a process. It's, while it's a contest, it's also a way of really integrating people into that notion of what it takes to start a business. And, and you know, you, you noted high tech, but we have a lot of companies and, and, and people who enter who are not necessarily high tech. Okay. But there might be some technology leveraging what they do, but it, it doesn't all have to be uh, ideas that have a patent behind them. Um, and sponsors, we welcome sponsors who, who are part of this. We're always looking for judges and mentors. We have a great crew coming in. So there's, broad, there's a broad base to it. And as you noted, it's part of building the entrepreneurial culture in Wisconsin, which uh, we certainly spend a lot of time around and I know a lot of people care about very deeply. Because it is having a greater impact on the economic well-being of this state. Yes. I mean, I mean, people need to, need to know mm -hmm. that this is sort of the future in a lot of ways. Oh, it, it is. And, uh, you know, some surveys show that Wisconsin doesn't do as well as other states when it comes to starting new businesses, but we do have a higher stick rate. In other words, those new businesses that start tend to be around longer, have a higher survival rate. Uh, past contest uh, entrants and, and finalists have done really well. They've raised about 160 million at this point over 12 years in terms of angel and venture capital and other grants, uh, merit-based grants. So, and, and most importantly, they're successful businesses. Sure. And, and they're a part of the scene today. Uh, so it's, it's something that really has added to that fabric of the, of the startup and scale-up culture in yeah. Wisconsin. Yeah. Well, introduce yourself, Henry. Um, what, what is Mobcraft? And why did you get involved in the in the business plan contest? Yeah, well, um, obviously, my name is Henry Schwartz, and I'm the president and CEO of Mobcraft. It's a crowdsourced brewery, the first one of its kind. And what we do is uh, take people's ideas and turn them into beers. So people submit ideas for beers online. We have a voting process, and then that winning beer is brewed and shipped to customers in about 40 states across the U.S. So when we, we first entered the governor's business plan competition as it was a requirement for our entrepreneurship classes when I was at UW-Whitewater. So I've actually entered this contest uh -huh. probably seven times in the past. Uh -huh. And um, before this most recent, we entered for Mobcraft two years ago and didn't even make it past the first round. Mm -hmm. And then the next year, after we knew a little bit more about the business, you know, completed the entire process. So your 250 words weren't good enough to get you, get <laughs> yep. you in the, in the They were a different door. 250 words yeah. the second time. So. Yeah. Right. Um, so, and so what else do people need to know, know about crowdsourcing beer? How, mu how much do you brew? How long is it available? What? Yeah, each individual batch that we make through the crowdsource model is one and done, unless uh -huh. the crowd, you know, really roars and wants it to come back. So we've pulled a few beers um, back from the crowdsource beers that we make on a regular basis, but each batch is about 2,400 bottles. 
So those can be pre-ordered on the website. They come in at a discount for people coming in on, on the front end of the process. And then any, any residuals um, make it around to Wisconsin liquor stores. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I find it fascinating because Wisconsin has been a little bit slow in terms of coming, coming into its own with respect to, to funding um, technology businesses and, and the growth of, of venture capital and all those mm -hmm. conversations we're having. And yet, you're also, in addition to being this fascinating beer startup mm -hmm. that combines technology, you've got this interesting crowdfunding, equity crowdfunding um, mm -hmm. project going on now. So um, it, it's a whole new world. It's not yeah. just, a, you know, traditional venture capital now. You're having, you're, you're, you're getting investors that aren't traditional mm -hmm. investors. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, well, it, I mean, it was just, it fit hand in hand. When we started the brewery, we were a crowdsourced brewery, you know, having this direct emotional connection with our consumers. So when this opportunity came up, when Wisconsin passed an exemption that allowed for the, you know, unsolicited sharing of, of an equity campaign, um, traditionally, you know, you could only in, talk with a select group of investors. They were normally high net worth individuals. This opened it up that anybody who was one of our fans could potentially become an investor as long as it took place through an internet site operator. Um, one of those launched, it was called Craft Fund, and that's who we're working with for this campaign. And that's Wisconsin based, correct? Craft yep. Fund? Wisconsin company, Craft Fund, Wisconsin company on our end, Wisconsin banks and Wisconsin investors. I'm assuming that that's part now of what is discussed at the governor's business plan contest. There's these alternative uh, forms of of, 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 of of investment available. Oh, right. And, but, it, but in addition, Tom, just talk a little yeah. bit more just about pragmatics. How many winners, what's available, sure. how, you know, what is, how does it work? Sure. Well, and, you know, Henry's story is, is not unusual about be entering a, a, a few times before mm -hmm. it really sticks. and. And he, uh, last year in Mobcraft, won the uh, advanced manufacturing category in the contest. There are four, con uh, four categories, uh, life sciences, information technology, advanced manufacturing, and business services. And within that, we never have a problem of fitting somebody's entry into one of those four categories, because sure. they're deliberately broad. Mm -hmm. uh, over time, there have been about 2,900 entries from uh, probably at this point 280 communities around the state. Uh, so it is, it is truly a statewide contest. It begins with the 250 words, but grows from there. That's really kind of the elevator pitch. That's, that's what you know, the judges are looking at initially to see how that, how that uh, really resonates. Then it grows into about a thousand word executive sum summary. And then for those who make uh, the top 25, a full business plan. Okay. And it's important in this day and age, I mean, you know, there are folks who say, well, we should follow a lean start startup model, and, but this is not inconsistent with that because at the end of the day, you still have to have a business plan. If you're talking to investors, if you're, talk, if you're raising money through crowdsourcing, whatever it is, people, those investors still want to see a plan. You can have a lean startup model, but you still need that plan to back up where you're going. Yep. All right, well, we're going to come back. We're going to talk more about the 2015 uh, Governor's Business Plan Contest right after this. You have a couple more weeks yet to apply to the 2015 Governor's, uh, Wisconsin Governor's Business Plan Contest. Tom Still, the uh, CEO of the uh, uh, Wisconsin Technology, Confer uh, Wis Technology Council, that's tough to get out, <laughs> is here and he runs the contest. Uh, Henry Schwartz, the uh, uh, founder of Mobcraft Beer and a previous winner is here as is uh, Brennan Nardi, the editor of Madison Magazine. So Tom, I wanted to ask you if you've got, there's Clearly somebody sitting out there watching right now thinking, I've got all these ideas, Henry was just saying mm -hmm. in the break that he had sure. six or seven, um, you know, entrepreneurs all over the place. What do you say to somebody who's just sort of thinking, I, I got this business plan yeah. or I have a little bit of money or I don't have anything but I've got this great idea, how do we get them off the, their right. seat and go right. and enter the contest? Well, one of the again the beauty of it is you don't have to start with a fully fleshed out idea the 250 words if you can get those down you know what's your product what's what's the business proposition what what do you, what do you see as the uh, as the competition those kinds of things just simple 
a but simple you, statement. They, it gets them started. Right. Do you have to have a certain background? I think people are wondering, no. well, I didn't, I didn't study entrepreneurship, or no. I'm not a scientist, or I'm, I'm a baker, you know? Right. It, do you have to have that something, or, you know, what does it take? No, I, and it doesn't take having a company. It could just be Joe or Jane Smith individual with those good ideas. And by the way, they can enter multiple ideas. You're not limited to one entry into the contest, and sometimes a lot of people are like that. Mm -hmm. They may have a variety of things tucked away in the desk drawer that they can that they can pull out and and try to move with. It's designed really, especially for that kind of person, who I'm not sure where I want to start, but I better start someplace. This might be it, because they get some feedback. They're connected to others who can help them. Uh, they wind up being in a peer group. Uh, we have things like boot camps where, where the entrepreneurs can show up and they meet others like themselves. Uh, sometimes I think being an entrepreneur can be a very lonely process unless you're around others. So it, it helps introduce them to that, that entire world. I think, you know, let's take arts, the arts for, as an example. You know, you could argue that artists are the original entrepreneurs in many ways. Those kinds of entries can fit into the business services category, for example. So I think, you know, we, we purposely keep it broad so that a lot of people with some very different things can enter and get a start and just get their feet under them. Yeah, I'm, I'm real curious because, um, could you talk about changes over time and what you've seen and sort of the level and the quality of the pitches? I attended the early stage symposium in, in uh, November and, and Henry was up there once again pitching his product and you talk about how when you first started the governor's pl business plan contest I mean you had just people from all walks of life and right. and there and there it was before Shark yeah. Tank and you know this yeah. whole notion of a pitch contest was yeah. was really young and and now you've really seen with with sport and encouragement I think of, mm -hmm. of mentors and and folks like you and and the ecosystem really growing um, you're seeing people like Henry who are really much more polished now so yeah. you know you, you get a variety of people just starting out and yes. people who you yeah, know what they're and doing. And we're demanding residuals from Shark Tank, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know. The original Shark yeah, Tank. Yeah, that's right. Um, Yours is better. It's, it, when we first started the contest, there were always, uh, there was always a cadre of really good plans at the top, and that's, and that's remained the same. But what we've seen is almost a compression from the bottom up, where there are more really good plans that make the overall contest much more competitive. Uh, in the beginning, almost all of the, um, the winners were, were life sciences. Uh, that has changed a bit over time as we have seen much more competition in the IT side, the advanced manufacturing side, the business service side. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a much more, uh, I'd say, compressed, com competitive contest now than it, than it was at the very start. Uh, and maybe that's because we've refined our own process, but I like to think it's because we're seeing more entrepreneurs, at least anecdotally, who have those good plans and can get them off their desk and get underway. Did it, did it feel competitive to you, Henry? I mean, is, is it sort of a stressful situation? Or, are, are, I mean, are, are most people who apply really comfortable in that kind of an environment? I mean, it's always, always stressful. You know, uh -huh. you're, for the first, you know, X many years that I didn't even make it past the first round, you know, actually receiving something that says, hey, you made it on to the next round. It's like, oh, cool, now what do we do? Yeah. Great, let's, you know, read the regulations and what's, you know, required and suggested for the next round and, you know, lots of planning and preparation going into that, reviewing with mentors, making sure you're polished and, you know, getting all your words down, making sure you're getting every point that you need to across. Mm -hmm. um, stressful, but, you know, it puts you in that mindset and in that exact circumstance that you need to do if you're going to progress a company forward. I don't know how many times I've used, you know, the same documents as a as a boilerplate for, mm -hmm. you know, building out when an investor wants a one pager or when they want a business plan. You know, we've used our yes. governor's business plan as our business plan for bank meetings, and you know, making sure that we have all those right criteria has really helped us, you know, in the in the progression of the business. Yeah. Tom Henry's kind of the archetype, if you will, of yeah. of a uh, young um, entrepreneur. Right. He's he's male. Yeah. Um, he's white. Uh -huh. I'm I'm interested in what you're seeing in terms of the churning of of of, yeah. of um, gender and diversity mm -hmm. in in terms of the growth of the startup community. And obviously, it's important in terms of job growth and creation and yeah. and equity. It it truly is, and we're we're seeing great progress there. Last year's contest, uh, I think 29 percent of all the entries came from women. Uh, and in the 
in the final, the, t the top 25, I believe it was, it was really very close to a third, uh, you know, within a per percentage point or two. Uh, we have seen more entrepreneurs of color. Uh, it is it is becoming much more diverse in that sense, and we're also seeing entrepreneurs who are older, mm -hmm. which is which is interesting. Sort of the 50-something entrepreneurs who perhaps had very successful careers in one line of work, but they've always had those great ideas. Now they feel like they're kind of unharnessed and ready to ready to go with it. So it's it's become a much more diverse uh, phenomenon overall. I want to follow up on that, and we're going to tell people exactly how they can apply uh, yeah. when we come back right after this. Madison Magazine editor Brennan Nardi and I are back with Tom Still, the president of the Wisconsin Technology Council, and Henry Schwartz, the founder of Mobcraft Beer. We're talking about the 2015 Wisconsin Governor's Business Plan Contest. And I just, I, I want to just uh, quickly, uh, Tom, th th for viewers of this show, it strikes me as slightly generational here uh, mm -hmm. that, that um, uh, Henry and, uh, and in between Brennan, uh, this kind of approach is, is, part of, of, of how they view mm -hmm. the world right now. I'm thinking you and I and some of our peers, these were the inventors who had the ideas in their drawer who were working at home at their small, uh, small projects. And it's a pretty dramatic change, but this is the way businesses are being created now. Sure. And products are being discovered and things are getting done. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, different, different groups have looked at the entrepreneurial culture around the United States and job creation. The Kauffman Foundation in Kansas City is a great example. They've looked at it over time and concluded that all net new jobs in the United States, or almost all, are created by young companies, by companies that are five years old or younger. Sure, big companies rise and fall, and, and you know that's somewhat driven by what happens in economic cycles, but that, that process of regeneration from below is what, is what really does create companies. And, 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 and with that, uh, a surge of jobs. Have you, can you give us some success stories, some companies that oh, have? Oh, sure. Uh, well, well, Henry mentioned that he had entered uh, uh, you know, several times. Another uh, good example was Janet Phillips in Vector Surgical, which is out of Oconomowoc. Uh, she entered three times and advanced each year, was eventually the grand prize winner. She's now doing business. Uh, it's, it's surgical instruments and some other techniques around that now doing business nationally and internationally with, with what they do. Um, uh, companies like Revolution EHR, uh, which, is, which is based in Dane County, uh, was recently uh, acquired and they continue to grow here. They have about 70 employees now and they, and they continue to move along. Uh, Biosystem Development, which was uh, the 2004 winner, the very first contest, and uh, was eventually acquired by Agilent Technologies and continues to, to grow. Yeah. One of the interesting things that we see is that companies that are acquired by larger companies, that's one of the best ways to bring those larger companies into Wisconsin is because they're looking for the good ideas to, to, to really shop and buy. So we've, we've seen a number of, uh, of companies in a variety of sectors that have done well. Fishity is another great example. Social media around fishing, uh, strategic fishing systems. Didn't we have uh, the the founder of that on the on our? We, we did the show last year, right? Yeah, and, he, and and so those are all companies that continue to move ahead. Right. And We're even launching a fishity beer. Oh, nice. Now nice. there's synergy. <laughs> there you go. Now, I don't know that that I even understood until I, I started, uh, you know, covering uh, entrepreneurship. But it's not just about companies starting; it's really the growth. I mean, if you look mm -hmm. at companies like Eat Street, a technology company right. that's employee based now is yes. about 125, or Zenda yeah. Desk. It's not mm -hmm. a Madison-based company, but they opened an office in Madison, and now they're growing to over 100 employees. So it's not just mm -hmm. that we're growing mod yeah. crafts of yeah. the world. Or that we're launching them, we're, mm -hmm. they're growing and they're part of our sustainable economy. Oh, absolutely! And Eat Street's another good example. They ran the contest under a different name some years ago, and and so it, they are. I mean, it's it's part and of the under. And here to stay. And you here know, to stay. Things. In in almost all cases, sure, there are occasionally companies that leave Wisconsin, but by and large, if you're if you begin here and you're rooted here, you tend to stay, um, just because it. it 
it's it's where the critical mass can be for your type of company. You're staying, right, Henry? Oh yeah, we're staying in Wisconsin. And That's are you still sure. are you still using what you got out of out of the business plan contest? I mean, is it is it still a part of your strategy? As far as our, our business plan? Yeah, what you what you yeah, mm -hmm. right, right. Yeah, what you learned from it, what you the, the relationships that you made. Yep. Yep. It definitely made us, you know, build out a lot of things in the business that we said, you know, here's this thing that we always knew was hovering out there and so we had to learn what all that entailed and put that in the business plan. So we've used some aspects of that as far as the, the prizes that we won from the contest. Those helped out greatly both um, in accounting PR and then um, cash prize as well, mm -hmm. which helped us out in kind of our our um, holy cow moment when we were kind of nose diving towards no money coming in and running out of money and then <laughs> that hit and then we kind of just like skipped and touched ground and then like took off from there. So <laughs> it was at that perfect moment as well to, you know, pad the cash. All right, somebody wants to apply, what do they do? They go to our website. What's the Technology Council website? Well, to govsbizplancontest.com. Okay. They go to the, the Tech Council now. website as well and then, and, the, and then link into that, but govsbizplancontest.com. They can enter right there. Uh, everything is, is uh, pretty intuitive in terms of mm -hmm. filling out what you need and, and, and writing the 250 words, which can sp be spread among four different uh, sort of areas of interest within each entry. And again, four categories, advanced manufacturing, business services, IT, and life sciences. Uh, everybody can seem to find something that is going to work for them there. Uh, and am I right that the, the 25 companies will be chosen as finalists? And they're all going to get some kind of feedback, Tom? Oh, yeah. Throughout the contest, everybody gets feedback. Uh -huh. we, we have a, a variety of mentors who are set up to comment from the very beginning. So if you enter, you can punch a couple of buttons about, and, and try to get advice from some people who have been down this road before. Uh, the first cut gets it down to 50 entries, then 25, then our diligent dozen. And those 12 actually present live at our Entrepreneurs Conference in June. Okay. And that's another important point to, to note. It's, it's not, this is a little bit of a, a marathon versus a sprint. Okay. Thank you very much. We've got to wrap it up. We're going to come back and I'll say goodbye right after this. Thanks to Tom and Henry, and of course Brennan, and you. We'll see you next Sunday on For the Record.